As you know, more drones are taken to the skies. They're actually helping survey sites during pre-construction and to conduct daily assessments. But are they really smart? Will collision avoidance be a game changer for all of you in construction? Will it help collect more data than ever before? I caught up with Anil Nanduri, Vice President of the New Technology Group and General Manager of the Drone Group with Intel at Interdrone this year to discuss how contractors are managing all of this data. Let's hear what he had to say. I really want to talk so much about what's going on with Intel and drones. Why don't you give us an update right now? Sure. I mean, we've been working with drones for a few years now. Um, and the actual start of our work within drones started with uh, trying to bring collision avoidance. Uh, in fact, a few years back at CES at a keynote, we kind of showed the first demonstration of a 360 degree collision avoidance uh, where we could play ping pong on stage with a drone. Um, and as we worked on that, we kind of realized that, you know, these systems are amazing in terms of the applications and the potentials that they have. Um, and that the commercial areas of where these applications can be used uh, are going to need the two aspects to come and evolve. One is that the flight systems need to be safer and smarter. Uh, so kind of more self-aware of what they need to go do and capture data. And, and, and a lot of the sensors are capturing huge amounts of data uh, that need to be automated and processed. So we kind of see this very much into how Intel looks at where the future is, that more and more machines are getting connected, more and more machines are collecting huge amounts of data, and the real value comes into how you analyze and understand this data, which in quite often is very difficult to humanly manage. So you want machines to manage this information as well. Well, let's talk about that. We talk about the commercial applications, but now we're talking about how construction is getting into this right now because typically we haven't seen construction adopt a lot of this, but now it's starting to change. And even though it's, as we've said on many of the interviews so far, still very much in the early stages, the novice stages, but we're really starting to see them use it and understand that drones and this technology can really be embraced and there's a lot of opportunity, correct? Definitely, and one classic example is the first step before you do any construction is you need to survey a site. Um, and uh, you know, it's been historically done uh, through the manual by putting a tripod and finding laser scanners and trying to map the terrain. Uh, a drone can do that in a flight within 10, 15 minutes. Um, and not just that, you're not collecting tens of points, you're collecting millions of points of data uh, in the 3D world. Um, and you can get to very, very high precision of accuracy uh, if you use, uh, you know, uh, refined differential GPS like the RTK GPS as well. So you can clearly see that what was a very long manual process, you can actually accelerate the speed of which you can capture that data. Um, and as well as probably do it a lot more efficiently and cost effectively. So that's one easy example uh, from a construction site. The second one is that as the construction begins, uh, you know, you're trying to map into what the architects have drawn up uh, in their drawings, in the CAD drawings, to what you need to put uh, in the ground. And quite often, there are always conflicts and changes that have to be made real time. Uh, and you know, it's very difficult, and they have to go back and remap it and put it back into the database as you kind of figure out what you've done and what changes you're making. You can actually automate that process through with uh, the drones actually doing you know, change monitoring or you know, progress reporting, trying to figure out how the construction's evolving over time. So there's a lot more insights that you can actually do by collecting that information. And you can do all this while the activity is not hindered in any way, because when the drone's flying, uh, the people can still work uh, as long as you know, they're aware that you know, these systems are around. But, um, you know, it's you don't have to you know stop the construction activity, for example, to put a survey person back on. So we see a lot of opportunities for the construction site, but we still have a lot of challenges that lie ahead. Where do you see some of that that we still have to overcome? So first of all, you know, while the drones are great, uh, you still have to manage all this data, right? Um, and so the the people who can understand that have to be able to provide those insights so that that knowledge that they have can then be automated. I mean, software engineers are smart, but then they don't know construction. Um, the second part about it is that if the construction uh, workflow requires them to train and learn a new skill, uh, that's an added cost. Uh, that's an added uh, factor. So they, they really need to see the, 
the savings that map out or the operational efficiency that they get so then they can adopt it. Um, so it has to be made a lot more easier for them to integrate this into a workflow. So, you know, there's still work from an automation standpoint, you know, flying the drone, mapping the area, still needs a level of expertise uh, that not everybody has, and so you need to be able to scale that. Uh, the second part about it is, of course, uh, in the construction activity, uh, one is uh, understanding while it's still external, but then there's also a lot of activity that goes on internal, so you still have to map that, and, and drones don't fly inside yet, uh, uh, so you have to use other tools. And you have to find the tools that can integrate all these kinds of data so that it adds value to the contractor or for uh, the architect, for the example. Now, Intel's taken a kind of a different road in some of this. You guys are actually working with the FAA on a lot of different things and regulations. How are you guys stepping that up a little differently than some of the other companies here? Right, so regulation is another big it's a huge barrier. One. Yeah. Yes, it's a huge uh, barrier. and, and, and the, the aspect of it is that while we have the Part 107 role and FAA has been great, uh, you know, what FAA really cares about, and we all care about, is about safety. Uh, you want to have a safe operation. Yeah, that's the number one thing in construction right now, right? Uh, exactly. And so, how is an aerial vehicle that's flying above us is safe and we can trust it? Um, and how can you bring that capabilities on the platform so the drone is smart when it's around people? So we're working on technologies like, you know, obstacle avoidance, so that real-time navigation, so that the drone itself is smart and is aware of the environment. So that's one technology we've worked on, and uh, we've demonstrated that a couple of times, um, and we want to bring it into our product portfolio. Uh, the second aspect of it is in terms of uh, uh, making sure that uh, you know the airspace integration is also done in a safe way. So there's the you know unmanned traffic uh, you know management system that NASA is piloting uh, the UTM task force. Um, as you, more and more drones come up there, how do you ensure that two drones uh, they know where they are flying and they have permissions to fly, um, and you are able to trust that this is an authorized flight? So how do you automate the approval process, the tracking process, and that's what the UTM is all about: is how can I create an air traffic management for this uh, drones. This drone stuff is pretty exciting. So I hope when you're looking at it, you're finding new ways to manage all your project data. That's innovation in tech at Interdrone 2017.